So what does Suntex forced bankruptcy mean for investors and for the future of the global solar industry? For insight on that, we're joined by Gordon Johnson, Managing Director and Senior Equity Research Analyst for Axiom Capital. He covers alternative energy companies. Gordon, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Gordon, Suntech filing for bankruptcy, you say it's not actually a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for Suntech. I think it's a bad thing for the overall industry. The stock market reacted very positively today, but I think it's a misunderstanding. Basically, the, the government in China is coming in and forcing Suntech's operating in its entity into bankruptcy so it could get support by uh, 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 Gulan Waxi, Wuxi Gulan, which is effectively a state-owned uh, huge financial um, uh, backer. So now, instead of Suntech being in a bad financial position, they have the backing of a state-owned entity, an SOE, which is going to put them in a better position and allow them to continue producing the solar panels that are plaguing an oversupplied market. But you're saying this is bad for the overall market. Explain that. Right. So the solar market right now is defined by 63 gigawatts of capacity or supply. We think demand this year is going to be 25 gigawatts. So it doesn't take a rocket science to see that there's a massive oversupply. SunTech should be allowed, its operating assets should be allowed to go out of business. But because the government in, in China is so reliant on keeping jobs and keeping those workers employed via the tax revenues, uh, they're going to keep that operating asset going and thus continue to contribute to this oversupply. And that's going to hurt other solar companies as it's well. It's going to hurt everybody because when you have an oversupply, prices continue to go lower. We need rationalization in this market and that's not what you're getting. What really has been the biggest toll on the solar industry? at the moment. Right, and, I, I mean, for the last year, the solar panel makers in general have suffered huge losses. What has been the cause? Natural gas prices, oversupply, what's really the point here? I think it's this example, this example of Suntech. Uh, you had the example of LDK, which is also in China months ago, where their local government came in and, and, and basically bailed them out. Now, effectively, it, sound, it doesn't sound like it because it's, it's bankruptcy, but China's being bailed out by Wuxi Guolin. Now, the other thing that's important is, is Suntech has about $580 million of payables that it looks like they're not going to pay. Today, when they announced the bankruptcy, um, Longjin came out and announced that they have $20 million they're due from Suntech that they don't think they're going to be able to collect. So uh, the government's coming in and allowing Suntech to effectively default on its convertible bond in the United States, which is why bankruptcy is being thrown around, and also not pay those payables, which is generating cash, but it's, it's allowing an entity that should be allowed to die uh, to stay, stay alive effectively. So if Suntec now files for bankruptcy, defaults on those bonds, what does that do for the reputation of Chinese companies in the U.S. and their overall creditworthiness? It, it hurts their creditworthiness, but I think from an equity perspective, a lot of the other Chinese companies don't have U.S. debt. Now, China's not going to allow Suntech to default on its Chinese debt, but they'll allow them to default on the U.S. debt. The rest of the Chinese companies don't have U.S. debt. So, in fact, while this looks negative, if you own U.S. equities that are Chinese PV companies, photovoltaic companies like Suntech, you now have this kind of uh, this, this support mechanism, uh, i.e., the government coming in and backing the company. Now, you're mentioning all of these other Chinese producers like Ying Li Energy, LDK Solar, Trina Solar. Right. They've performed very poorly as well. Do you Correct. think we can expect to see any kind of mergers amongst them? I don't Either think so. Either forced or by their own initiative? I don't think so. Again, the, the key focus here by the government is you don't want to have protests outside your Ying Li facility or your Trina Solar facility. Suntech, just uh, uh, September of last year, they, they announced they were cutting some jobs, 1,500 jobs, and instead of cutting those people, they reallocated them to other divisions within Suntech because you can't just, in China, you can't just fire people because that creates uh, pandemonium. So I don't think you're going to have acquisitions, and I don't think you're really going to see consolidation in this industry, i.e. factories being shut down until you have a real banking crisis and there's no more money for banks to support these companies. How much of an impact is the fact that there are U.S. tariffs imposed on Chinese solar companies in this bankruptcy filing? Right, that's a good point. So uh, there are U.S. tariffs. However, the last two major projects in the United States, a 250 megawatt project in San Diego County, 25 megawatt project in Arizona, were won by Ying Li. Ying Li beat out First Solar, they beat out MEMC, they, these are all U.S. companies. So despite those tariffs, the Chinese panels are still priced below the U.S. guys. So the Chinese government is still strongly supporting its own solar industry? Correct. And I, I, we believe they will continue to do so until forced, the, until forced they can't do it. And I, I don't think that happens until there's a banking crisis. But what can be done to get the solar industry back to the place where it was a couple of years ago? Or is just the situation of oversupply impossible to retrieve it? 
you have 65 gigawatts, 65 gigawatts of supply capacity, 25 gigawatts of demand. You need more than half of these uh, players in the industry to go out of business. SunTech only has 1.8 gigawatts of cell capacity, 2.4 gigawatts of cell uh, module capacity. There's 65 gigawatts of cell capacity out there. So even if SunTech were to go bankrupt and go out of business, which they're not, it's not really going to move the needle. You need a lot of guys to go out of business. And that's why we're, we're so negative on the market, on the solar market. Okay, well, thanks very much for that insight, Gordon Johnson, Managing Director and Senior Equity Research Analyst at Axiom Capital.